Hi guys, it's Evelyn again. I'm back. I just did the general read for all of you watching. It's, it's source guidance for what you need to raise your vibration and come into harmonious permanent physical union. That's what the read is for. So it's for everyone watching at any time that video. And I'm going to do the oracle cards now. There's a little bit heavy energy today, so to help raise your vibration a bit, make sure you get your body moving. I slept way too much last night. Well, actually, it felt really good because I'm not usually able to get my eight hours. So I slept 10 hours last night, which was amazing. But sometimes when you oversleep, it makes you drag a little bit. But everyone I talked to today <laughs> seemed to be dragging too. So it's just the energies. So it is May 9th, 2019 today. For everyone watching, the best and highest good of all is concerned. What do we need to know? What do we need to learn? All right, so we're going with um, Source today. If any others come up that want to contribute, we'll go with them after this deck. What do we need to know? What do we need to learn? God, please armor us all with your love. Let's clear all negative energies from the space, across all dimensions of time, space, matter, and reality. For the highest good of all is concerned, filling the empty space with only beautiful organic love and diamond light. We are in a line. And still with that love and time. Okay. All right, so from spirit, from God, source. All right, we have three separately. Four, five. Anything else? So we have a few little, we have so, so six singles came out and then a little bit of a pile to count. So Archangel Metatron's cloak came up, number 51. So again, the King of Swords, who's very prevalent in the read today. That's what we have today. So if you can't read that, there you go. Okay, so you can read that if you'd like. But I stand in my power and lead others forward. So don't forget to stand in your power. Don't question yourself. Just be love. Give yourself love if you need it today. Sometimes it's about you and not the other person. So the first card out was Buddha again. Buddha came up this week already. 33 is the Christ vibration, which is a six of love, family, community. When you draw this card, Lord Gautama, who became the Buddha, is calling you to live in a state of peace, compassion, enlightenment. You are ready to expand your, caution, your consciousness to include all that is and to view the world from a higher perspective. You're asked to live in total harmlessness with all things. This creates safety for you, for all creatures will love you and feel safe with you. Your guidance is to remember we are all one and to treat each person, animal, and sentient being as if they are a beloved part of you. The affirmation is, I am one with everyone and everything. So there's always going to be little tests. Like now, my new neighbors, um, who've been here a while now, but um, it's, you know, getting familiar with them after you've had another neighbor for the past 25, 30 years. So they have a dog that barks no matter what. They just keep barking and barking and barking. Now every time I got in my backyard to get some sun, this dog's like just barking at me. And I tried to make friends, <laughs> but he just likes to bark. So, and I'm trying to listen to something. It's not always something I want to hear. Um, but when you let go of the frustration of it, then things resolve themselves. They either stop or they get taken inside. So it's remember not to get frustrated over things, to just allow and find your peace again. All right, so that's the one, the first card. Then we have animals. I'm not going to read all these because six cards came up, but they came up separately, so I'm going to show them all. Okay, so animals. So then I was just talking about animals, which I hadn't noticed this card was animals. Which is number two of the high priestess. Be your high priestess when dealing with animals. Then we have 48 of Pallas Athena, which came up the past couple days. 48 is the eight of cups, so it's about walking away when you need to to find your emotional um, fulfillment and also to go within, to find that stability within your heart. Then we have Mary Magdalene of 35, the wounded warrior energy. Okay? And that's another eight. That's the nine of wands. And then we have water, which we were talking about, making sure to drink enough and not get dehydrated because that's going to make you feel dragged down as well which is 15, right? The devil in the details of just drinking your water every day. 
Okay, and don't forget 15 is a six. It's about the shadow energies of day-to-day -day living. Everyone has a shadow side and they're never gonna go completely away, okay? You need to have that balance. You just wanna err on the side of the light. Just like with, um, why do I always forget the word? So within your body, you know, you have acidic and basic, alkaline, alkaline and acidic, okay? So we err on the side of alkaline because um, we need the balance of both, but you know, once when you get cancer and things like that, it's become your, because your body becomes completely acidic and it can't handle that. But it's not about not having one or the other, it's about having both, but erring on the side of light or the alkaline, okay, or the base energies. All right, so we have, um, Oh, one more. So water and then uh, Archangel Metatron, 27. Who's watching out for all of us, but especially getting on the masculines. 27 is the Ace of, of Wands, which is, you know, about pure passion, new inspiration, new create, creativity. Okay. So it's just remembering that all of these parts are important to not to not let one part of your life fall away, like your health, right, or your spirituality, or your your emotional health, or your intellectual health, whatever it is. You know, there's you have all parts of your life, whether it's your business or your your home, your family, your love life, your spiritual life, whatever it is, in in any sense of how you look at your life. It's about not ignoring any part of it. You need to stay balanced to give, you know, time to all parts of you. So we have those six cards, and then some more came up to be seen, to count. One, two, three, so there's five more. And the one on top here is unicorns, but of course, um, Thoth was the second to last and wanted to be seen, so it actually stayed up like this. And 22 is the unicorns, which is the fool, taking that leap of faith and being feeling free to fall on your face if needed. It's okay. Don't worry about your pride. It's better to fall on your face and fall for love in any sense of the word. And to not forget, for thought, it's my life and health are in perfect harmony. Okay? So don't, don't forget about your health. Everything's important. And the unicorns is affirmations. I connect with the unicorns. So you can read that if you'd like to. Okay. So we have 11 all together there. So again, we have justice, which is just truth and balance. But remember to be just to yourself as well, not just to others. All right, so six, five, so expansion and love and justice. Justice for all. So let's see here. Who wants to be heard? Why did I just put all the other ones? So I'm going to call in Buddha, Pallas Athena again, and Mary Magdalene. See if they each have a message for you. Buddha. Pallas Athena and Mary Magdalene. This is May 9, 2019. For everyone watching, the best and highest good of all is concerned. What do we need to know? What do we need to learn? And we're asking for guidance from Buddha is the first, Pallas Athena the second, and Mary Magdalene is third, if you'd like to participate. Everyone take a deep breath. Okay, so first one out we have here, second and third. Oops, I don't want to lose that one. We have some to count here as well. And just three. You can count a lot today, that's it. Okay. So at the bottom of the deck is finances reversed. So it's saying not to focus on money right now, because this would be, this upright for me can bring up finances, but it also can bring up the 30 pieces of silver, so betrayal, 
and money can always be in that sense um, used for that kind of thing, some manipulation. But this is coming up reversed here on the bottom of the deck. Okay, so you might want to take your focus away from money issues for the moment, to tr have trust and faith, to allow it to just grow on its own. Um, so we have first from Buddha, uh, Greco-Roman reversed. All right. I was just getting a crib. That's funny. I never see that in that. But this is what it looks like upright from the Colosseum. And the light coming in through the clouds. But it's coming up reversed. So I was definitely seeing a crib for someone. So someone might be getting out of their crib. <laughs> so you might be in trouble now. I'm getting crib as slang as well. The Colosseum being referenced as a crib, you know, someone's lair. But there's no light there. And it's coming up Greco Roman, but Roman, but it's upside down. They're saying, and we're not talking. This, like you say, this is not your mother's, you know, whatever. It's saying this is not your old-fashioned Coliseum. This is today's crib, what we're talking about. That there needs to be light infused into those, those um, environments, those um, areas of the cities who are in desperate need of a little light. So they need help. So be the homeless, the hungry, just the poor sections of the city. It's they're referencing it to liken the Colosseum, right? It's like um, a jungle, you know, for some, where they have to deal with you know drug dealers and gunfire every day of their lives, not feeling safe going to school, all of that every day. Okay, so that was from Buddha. Um, from Pallas Athena, we have Father. So it's very important for the father to connect with their children and keep that bond strong. And ne never let me go. I'm getting someone slip, slip through their fingers. That a child feels responsible for the parent, which should never be that way. The parent decides their own life, and now, um, and I definitely know what this is about. So this is about, you know, as your parents grow older, the children having to, to deal with the bed that the parents have made for themselves so people who've had issues in their life whether it's alcoholism or drug problems or any kind of issue like that or losing all their money gambling whatever shopping um and now the children having to pay for that but if that's not their responsibility their response their responsibility is to love them but they don't have to pay their debts the children should know that to not feel guilty about that the adult was responsible for their life that's what they chose for themselves is not it's not your duty to go down with the ship so to speak to know that and for you adults out there listening don't expect your kids to um to save you when you never reached out to save them and we shouldn't be saving each other anyway we should be saving ourselves and not expecting others not relying on others so much that will naturally happen. It's not that we don't give to each other, we do. But for those who have abused themselves, and because of their abuses, then lay burdens on their family, that is not okay. And is not the family's burden, it is his burden or her burden who did this to themselves. And the children shouldn't have to feel guilty for that. They should still be able to love that person that doesn't mean they should have to sacrifice everything about their life for that person. They have a duty to their own life and their own destiny. But it's just always about keeping that connection. If someone doesn't want your love, 
because you refuse to give them money, just for example, is that love, right? And that's what a, an addicted person, a personality may respond that way because your love isn't good enough. And that's not love. But that doesn't mean the child or the parent will stop loving that other person even though they need to detach from them. Sometimes you need to. Okay. The third card out from Mary Magdalene is ships coming in. Nice and squeaky clean. Once fathers um, get things balanced between them and their children, it's like then they can clean their ships and get them ready. Ready to sail. I was just getting P.S. I love you. She. <laughs> P.S. to she. I love you. Is there something else? Open your blinds. Not only your physical blinds within your home to let the sun in, but open your blinders, the ones that you have on, and only you know what they are. What have you had your blinders on about? Refusing to see. Afraid to deal with something because you were afraid to get sucked in. Whereas now you've come into your power and you know no one can suck you in unless you allow them to. That doesn't mean you can't still deal with them. You just walk away when you want to. All right. And we have some to count. Let me see what I have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have twelve and three, so there's fifteen there. Let's see if there's, there was another three that came out. Let's see if they want us to know something. Maybe it's one from each together. And 12 is about being the wise man and sometimes just hanging in limbo to see, to allow that new perspective, to stay low and just wait for the energies to guide you. And then because of the 15 of that energy being out, um, of our shadow side, bringing it out more, so you might want to lay low during that time. So we have the galactic unrequited love and male-female all reversed. Okay, so this is what they look like. Upright. Let's see if I can get that right. Okay, so that's upright. So let's see what we got here. So there may be a resolution. So in a connection that was not a good connection, and it was a galactic, it was a karmic connection from a galactic time that they needed to be together to work out something about that that past life together. But now it's done. So it may have been a uh, connection before that was unrequited from one side and then this life they had to come into a relationship where it was unrequited from the other side to make up for that, the karmic you know, retribution basically in a relationship. But that's coming up is over. We're no longer in the galactic world. We're now done with that karma and it's settled. That was the shadow side that needed to come up with this bulk energy. So we have 15 here and then three more, which is 18. So we have 12, 15, and 18. So kind of, you know, emotional, shadowy energies there. So it's saying, to, it's saying to lay low. Don't deal with finances right now because the energy's not right for it. So now we have Journey of Love. Everyone take another deep breath. May 9th, 2019, everyone watching. The best and highest good of all those concerned. What do we need to know? What do we need to learn? What is our advice? What is our advice? I'm just going to go to Mary Magdalene for this, please. Mary Magdalene, what is our advice? Okay. 
pa patience, my children. Two more after that, and that's it. Okay, shifting universes at the bottom of the deck, number seven. Okay. And it's very much about music and symbols and shifts, dimensions, all the layers within. The first card out is the Temple 59, which is the war, you know, war as within, so without. If there's a war within you, that's what creates the war on the outside. The Temple. So to be good to your Temple, take care of yourself. And this is also the Temple where you come together in union. So if you're not able to stay um, in balance within yourself, how do you expect yourself to stay in balance when you come into union? because then there will be triggers involved. And that's okay. But even when you come into union, it's not going to be perfect. There are just things to work out. Some compromises to make to understand each other better. But to be honest, you have to be ready to completely open up. Um, the other two cards that came out, which I'm not going to read, but I want to look at these see if anything comes out for me. The cloak is number 50 and for me that really looks like Jesus just standing there we have um, loving all that is number 22 so the fool came up again for me this is the divine mask on the divine feminine right now okay so as she holds space for him, he's in deep contemplation, but she holds him up while he goes through that. She holds the light, okay, loving all that is, as he wears the cloak that protects him. So the divine, I keep getting that the divine feminines are sealed, but not necessarily the divine masculines because they're still going through their 3D karma stuff. So as you are protected, you're able to constant, perpetually help your masculine just by holding space and keeping your energy high and giving love like you should be giving to everyone. I'm getting when you, when you hold him in your etheric love, he feels you and he contemplates that deep love, what it means. But he finds a quiet place to be in in order to feel that. Because in his chaotic life, you know, it's very hard to feel the connection, right? When you're stressed all the time or have people around you a lot, making a lot of noise, it's hard to connect that way. But we have the 50 of the 10 of cups and then the 22 of the fool, right? Finding that emotional fulfillment by being the fool with a perpetual open heart and always taking that leap of faith. So let's read the temple now, where they come together. I love that because they're separate there, and then here they're together. So 59 says, The lover and the beloved meet in sacred space. They take respite from the cares of the world, entering into sanctuary where only they exist. You are in need of this. Meditation, making love, connection and dance, intimacy and surrender into the moment. Your body and soul need to enter into the temple and participate in sacred ceremony. Choose to gift this to yourself. Set aside time. Turn off the computer and the mobile telephone. Turn on music and set lighting. Be in the present moment. Do you remember your body? Ah, yes, here it is. Can you be in this temple with presence and delight? This oracle brings guidance to take time out to smell the flowers. Savor the pleasures of life and renew your connection to the inner lover. Your sensuality wants to come out and play. You're encouraged to explore scent, touch, taste, and feeling. You're encouraged to play with color, what moves you, what brings you into connection with yourself in this moment again. It is the wholeness of divine self-connection in sacred space that will best nourish you now. And the poem reads, Love should be given as it is received. On this day I grant you the love of a thousand mountain streams and the pleasure of a hundred bleats. 
from a newborn baby fawn, for I too cry for love and spirits connecting. And like the fawn, I cry with the hunger of being alive. And on this day, I cry for the happiness of giving and the warmth of receiving and the softness of your gentle touch. It is moments like these when I smile for the someone who will always care. Okay. So it's just time out, time to take out and kind of um, look into yourself again. What is it about? I think scents and uh, colors are amazing to figure out what it, what, how do they affect you? Do you ever take the time to figure that out? Why do you like certain colors? And maybe you want to change up a color to see how it affects your manifestations and smells as well. Scents. What scents do you like? What scents take you back to your childhood? And is there a wound there for you to bring up? But it's just about to be still for the moment. Let everything kind of be with the harsh energies. <sighs> just be with yourself and it's okay. No worries. Okay. Make sure you drink your water and get your rest and be happy. Have fun. Take a walk and rise and be loved, guys.